In this video, I'm going to show you how you can move Dot from Polkadot over to the Cardano ecosystem and start participating in DeFi there. You can look for yield farming opportunities and all sorts of things so that you can earn some extra rewards off your Dot. And you know, this is pretty cool. This brings in a whole new level of interoperability between the two chains by starting to bring over these various assets. This is still the very beginning. We're gonna see a lot more come out from both of these ecosystems as we start to collaborate on various different things. Now, let's get into this video. So this is the announcement here. This came out a couple of days ago from the recording of this video and the OneChain team have finally made this a possibility. Now, I asked them back in February of 2024 to see if they could make this possible. I noticed the DOT integration and the Cardano one, and I really thought there should be some more collaboration between these two chains. I've been working with the Unifiers team in regards to governance, adoption, and interoperability to see where things can work together between the two ecosystems. We've got a lot of cool things happening, such as Substrate and Midnight on the Cardano side of things. So why not make the chains and projects more interoperable as well? So this is the big announcement. And if you haven't seen this interview yet that I did with Temujin, the CEO of OneChain, please check it out. It goes through the big announcement and everything that is happening within the OneChain ecosystem in terms of interoperability for Cardano at the moment too. So let's get into this tutorial and learn exactly how this all works. Now to make this a possibility, you do have to use the polkadot.js extension. So this is what you need to install first. If you're someone from the Cardano ecosystem, you may not know what wallets to use. You need to use polkadot.js. If you're on mobile, I'd highly recommend Nova. Nova is a fantastic wallet and also Talisman. You can create one wallet, same seed phrase, and share them across all the different wallets as you would in Cardano. Now you need polkadot.js because one chain requires it. So make sure you get that all installed and working working. Now I've gone back to the polkadot.js website. I'm just going to load up this wallet here so we can see the balance and everything appear within my wallet. So I've connected my wallet and I can see my account here. It all looks good. I've got 2.8 dot within this particular wallet. Now you can go over to the one chain bridge, connect your wallet, scroll down until you see polkadot and polkadot.js. Let that one load. Now there was one setting I had to change within my wallet here, and this was around the uh, main settings for the display address. I had to change this over from, I think it was uh, by default was on Substrate. I had to change it and make sure it had the Polkadot relay chain address showing. So once that was showing, the addresses were in sync. So I had the uh, 16QD here and 16QD uh, appearing on the asset bridge too. So I'm on the bridge.onechain website, click on asset bridge here. You can now select Polkadot as your chain. And the only asset that will appear at the moment is Dot itself. Now with the destination chain here, you need to select Cardano. And in this input field here, it's a little hard to see, you don't notice it at first, but here you can click on the edit icon and you need to paste in your Cardano address. Now I have my NAMI wallet here, which I use for this type of stuff. I'll click on receive, copy my receiving address and paste it into that field there. Click on the little tick and that will confirm it into that input field. So this all looks good now. I've got my Polkadot address, my Cardano address all set up. Now there's a little trick here with the amount of dot that you can bring over. Any of the Polkadot addresses, um, any of the Polkadot wallets will always require a remainder of one dot in there. So I can't move my entire balance of dot over. I can only move roughly 1.5. Uh, there's a little bit of fees here and then I'll have a little bit of dot left over on my original account. So I have a, a one, 1 1.4 dot as well. So this is roughly moving half. So I should be okay there. Everything looks good. Let's click on next. Yes, I'm not moving to an exchange address. This is my wallet address. And here we go. So you receive 1.4 dot. Everything here looks good. Let's confirm this. So this is my transaction confirmation on Polkadot. That all looks good. Let me type in my password here, sign the transaction. And we are go. So now that is bridging the dot over. It says it will take 15 minutes, but let me just time it here. So it's 5.56 at the moment. Let's see how long this takes. And we are done. So that, that was less than three minutes. 
That's great. That's amazing. Let's uh, have a look at the history. And yeah, it's gone to the address. Next thing to check is if, if it's actually gone to my Cardano wallet. So I'm just load up NAMI and having a look at my assets here. All right, it's taking a little while. So I might have a look at my transaction history. Yeah, there we go. Something's come in and it is 1.46 dot. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right. We've got some assets over. So now that we do have some assets over on our wallet here, what can we do next? Well, probably the best place to go now is uh, probably MinSwap or Sunday Swap. Uh, they're the two of the most popular DEXs at the moment. Uh, they both use a batches style system. But let's go to MinSwap here and see if we can uh, participate in any sort of liquidity pool, at least to provide liquidity to gain some rewards. So let me connect my NAMI wallet. So let's have a look at the various pools. Let me just type in dot here and see if it comes up at all. See if someone else has made a liquidity pool at this point in time. And I don't think anyone has yet. Okay. Or maybe this is uh, still filtered by verified. Okay. Maybe it's not a verified pool yet. Ada dot. This might be a, ver a particular pool for it. And some of the metadata just hasn't appeared yet. Uh, might be, uh, I can't tell. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, pools here and it might be the wrong policy ID. So we can check the policy ID. I can go back to my NAMI wallet and load up the dot, get the dot asset. And in that dot asset, I can see the policy ID. And I can search by the policy ID here. There we go. So the, these are all of the one chain assets and you can see all the various different uh, um, liquidity pools that have been opened. And there really isn't a, a dot ADA pool that has been set up yet from what I can see. So I will set that up. I will probably set it up at the completely incorrect prices and I will lose some assets here, but let's add some liquidity. Let's go add and let's go first token ADA and I'll put in one, uh, three, eight. Oh, okay. We've got some dollar values there. Okay. And this side, whoops, this side here, there's some dot and I'll put in the max and this one, I accidentally click that off. So here, I don't know how much, um, ADA is maybe I should check the price here. So 1.6, uh, 1.466 dot. Let me check all this 1.4, whoops. 1.466 is 9.24 USD, change this one to ADA. Let me type that back in, 9.24. So 22.3 ADA is the current market price. So let me change that. And that should be the right ratio. So I, I shouldn't technically lose out here. So uh, that's the right ratio. Let's create a pool with this. So let me just sign this transaction here. And there we go. So now that is going to go through the MinSwap batches and put that liquidity on chain. Then we can search that policy ID again around the dot asset and we should see it appear within those liquidity pools. So let me hit close on that. Now that dot asset has left my wallet. So I need to grab the policy ID here from this particular tweet that the one chain team had put out. And I'll go back to the MinSwap decks. Let's search against that policy ID. Oh, there it is. There it is there. So ADA dot, and I'm pretty sure TVL, that's uh, 44 ADA. That's all of my assets there. So the total uh, LPs is uh, 571 million LP tokens locked in. And that's essentially all me. At the moment, I'm the only one that's minted some dot on the Cardano ecosystem and have migrated over and locked it into a liquidity pool. So we'll need a lot more liquidity here if people are going to do any trades. If you uh, trade against uh, ADA and DOT at the moment, you will get price impact, uh, suffer from permanent loss. Well, I will because I've provided uh, the LP here at the moment, but that is now a reality. We now have DOT on the Cardano ecosystem and within a liquidity pool on the MinSwap DEX. Now, if you are looking for more opportunities in regards to yield farming and stuff, that's all coming next. I'm going to start working with various DEXs and various teams to see what type of rewards we can get into these particular liquidity pools on the DEXs and also look into some other projects that might be interested in moving liquidity across chain as well. So this is just the first step. I'm pretty excited about this. It's opened up a whole new level of interoperability and cross-chain collaboration between Cardano and Polkadot. If you enjoyed this video, if you want to learn more about the two ecosystems, give me that thumbs up, hit subscribe, click on the notification bell. 
I'll see you in the next video.